vegan gochujang pasta. What are you doing with my sister? You know, I should marry him about. Mm -hmm. Any vets out there? It's Rose and welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another mukbang. Today you're watching another episode of Munching Mondays, which is my mukbang series. Mukbang is an eating show, so we're gonna eat together and we're gonna chat. So if that is your thing, then don't forget to subscribe and also thumbs up this video. So today, guys, we are doing a mukbang of gochujang pasta. Ooh. La la. So this is gochujang pasta. I just made it and I just posted a recipe video on this pasta So that's gonna be linked down below if you guys want to know how to make it and yes, you want to know how to make it It is so good. I've made this so many times at this point I think it's like my fourth or fifth time because it is so good and of course it's vegan and oh, it is just delicious I added in some uh, plant-based meatballs. These ones I got from very good butchers haven't tried this yet So I'll let you know what I think and I just have a nice little side salad here. There's some parts of palm. There's all Olives, there's cherry tomatoes and lots of lettuce and I used a vegan ranch dressing I can't really tell you what brand yet because I'm working with them But you will find out soon. Yay! I'm so excited to drink. I have some uh, Costco brand kombucha ginger lemonade if you will shall we pour Oof. And guys, I'm sorry if you can hear any background noise. I am using this. What do you call this mic? The one that's attached to me. So hopefully you don't hear too too much background noise, but I am using this mic because my my patio door is open because my dog is outside. Buri. Buri is outside. If you haven't seen my video, I adopted a dog from Korea. All the details will be in the video linked below. She's chilling outside. So I kept the door open because I don't want her to get like anxious about the door being closed. So the door is open. So it might be a little loud. Hopefully it's not. Hopefully this mic will simply capture what's going on over here. Okay, here we go. Delicious. All right, guys, let's get started. Here we are. Ooh, it's getting a little sticky in it. It's been sitting here a little bit. Let me just mix it around a bit. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Little sticky. That's okay. Just gotta. Here you go. Ooh, look at that. Let us try a bite. I have here a spoon, a fork. We're gonna twirl. Ooh. So this is vegan gochujang pasta. First bite. Mmm. Mmm. You guys, I'm telling you, it is so good. It's a bit spicy, but oh, it is like nice and creamy and, and like very, it's very rich. Okay, but it's nice and spicy. It's so good. Okay, let's try this um, plant-based meat bowl. Again, this is from Very Good Butchers which is a Canadian plant-based sort of meat company. And I haven't tried this one yet. So let's try this plant-based plant meatball. Mmm. That's quite nice. Quite meaty. Mmm, I like it. Let's do a bite of both the plant-based meatball and some of the gochujang pasta. Guys, it is so good. I'm gonna do some salad. I always like to try to eat some veggies with every meal, especially if it's like pasta or something, like a fresh salad. Mm. Mm. I also added some black olives in here. Do you guys like olives? Mm. Olives are kind of like cilantro, right? There's people that love them. And there's people that hate them. I really like olives, although sometimes they can be a bit too salty. Mm. Salad. Mm. I'm in heaven. Mm. 
Sorry if the lighting is like kind of weird. The light is shining from this way. This way, I did not put a light because I'm lazy. <laughs> so you're gonna have to do, okay? Another reason why I love eating salad with like a meal or just like vegetables in general is that it forces me to slow down my eating because you guys know I eat so fast and it's not really necessarily good for digestion. And also if you eat too fast, you don't realize like you're full. So you can like overeat very easily. So that's why like adding in like a side salad or even a starting or a starting salad, an appetizer or salad, it's like kind of a good idea because then I think it aids digestion as well because you're eating it, you know, lots of veggies. All right. Cheers. Mmm. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Yo, so good. I just love fusion, okay? I love fusion of two amazing types of cuisines put together in a dish. I think it's so good. And this gochujang pasta, oh, it's perfect. Anyway, if you guys haven't seen my video about my adopted dog, go watch it. Um, it's been now almost a week, actually, because she arrived, is today Monday? Yeah, she arrived on a Tuesday evening, like a Tuesday night and today is monday so it's been almost a week she's been adjusting i can't remember what i said in the previous video and i can't remember if i filmed it before or after she met nadi which is my other dog but they've met okay so if you don't know the story i go into more detail about this in my um in the video where i talk about body which again it'll be linked down below but basically nadi lives with my parents okay she's always lived with my parents but obviously she comes over here a lot i watch her a lot i go to my parents a lot because i can't be away from nadi that long because i am obsessed with her and of course my biggest thing honestly when i was adopting body was that her and nadi would get along and that they could become best friends hopefully so they met you guys they met Okay, these girls met two females, okay? They're around the same size. They look kind of similar. They have similar features, but they have completely different personalities. Obviously, I don't know, you know, Bodhi's full personality yet because I feel like in the first few days of finding a new home, the dog is still nervous and she is just getting used to, you know, the environment. So she could just be shy. Who knows, right? I think their true personalities might show up a little bit later. But um, as far as I know, she's quite calm, whereas Nadi is very energetic. She is very much an active, hyperactive dog. So very different personalities, both obviously very adorable. Mm. Mmm. When I'm traveling and stuff, I want Bodhi to stay with my parents and I want her to become friends with Nadi and stuff and it would just be perfect, you know, if they get along and they love each other and my parents' place has a big yard, which is great for dogs. So we set up a meeting. <laughs> so initially I was told that you have to meet on neutral ground, so not at someone's like home. We went to a field near my parents' house and I was holding Bodhi's leash. My mom went to go get Nadi and um, Nadi, she is a very smart dog. She knew immediately, she saw Bodhi and me holding Bodhi's leash and she, I feel like she just knew. She's like, something is different about this dog. She's played with many dogs before. You know, she goes to dog parks. She interacts with dogs. It's not like she's not, you know, she's not a social dog. She interacts with dogs all the time. But with her, she knew. She's like, oh my God, there is someone with my sister. I'm the sister. There's someone with my sister and I don't like it. She immediately kind of froze a little bit and her tail just went like, all the way down like between her legs and she was like very clingy to me she could clearly feel something okay
I'm gonna add a little cashew parmesan. Ooh, mm. my fave. So I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I don't know, I, I guess I wasn't expecting her reaction like that. You know, I was a bit nervous, and then, you know, they calmed down a little bit. I could tell Bodhi wanted to say hi to Nadi because she was, like, wagging her tail. By the way, I'm saying Nadi and Bodhi in, like, the Korean accent, okay? Because they're Korean, technically Korean words. Nadi in Korean means lily, Bodhi in Korean means barley. So cute. In English, spelling and pronunciation, I guess, you would say Nari and Bori. But I call them Nadi and Bodhi, so. I find most people don't have a problem pronouncing Bodhi or Nadi, so. Anyway. Bodhi wanted to say hi. She was like kind of wagging her tail. She was like curious. She wanted to sniff her butt. You know what I'm saying? But Nadi was just not having any of it. She's like, no, what are you doing with my sister? You know, eventually we started walking back to my parents' place. And at one point, like Nadi kind of like snapped at Bodhi just a little bit. She was like, <laughs> and then Bodhi kind of was like, Rah. so they both kind of like, you know, there was like a little bit of a, you know, tense situation. Mm. We got back to my parents' place. We went straight to the backyard. And Maddie just avoided Bodhi the entire time. <laughs> and you could tell Nadi was like so upset. And I was so sad. I was like, oh my god, what have I done to Nadi? I hope she doesn't think I'm like replacing her, you know? So sad. I mean, to be fair, she is also a little bit of a drama queen. Yeah, it was very interesting to see their dynamic. They chilled for a bit. We did take them for a nice long walk and during the walk because we're outside i guess not in natty territory they didn't have any issues really they kind of just avoided each other for the most part but during the walk it was like quite nice but yeah it's when Bodhi is at you know my parents house natty like freaks out a little bit because you know it is her home she's like who is this stranger you brought into my home <laughs> That was the first meeting and then the next day because we want to get them acclimatized like pretty quickly because unfortunately like the timing is kind of bad like I'm actually going on a trip pretty soon in a few weeks which I it's not ideal it just kind of worked out this way so I want to get her acclimatized to my parents place and just get her used to going there just so that we're not like changing things around too too much so we did go to my parents place again the next day I was going to sleep there with Bodhi and again in the beginning Natty was like what is going on why did you bring her back okay but again, I think they kind of slowly started to get used to each other. Small bits of growling. And then um, usually when I sleep at my parents' place, Nadi will sleep with me for like a second, like on my bed. And then she'll go to my mom. She'll sleep with me for like a second and then she'll go to my mom. But then she did not leave my side. Bodhi slept on her bed on the floor because that's what she's used to. And I also didn't want both of them sleeping on the same bed because like, you know, I don't know what might happen. <laughs> So then, you know, we all did sleep in harmony. But he was on the ground. Nadi was on the. Um, I think Bori wants to come in. Bori, 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 Okay, let me finish filming. You want food? You weren't eating last time. I'll give you food after, but I don't think you're gonna eat it. Yeah, Bodhi, her appetite is definitely not as strong as Nadi's. Anyway, so we slept. Uh, Bodhi slept, you know, on the ground. Not on the ground, um, on her bed, but like not on my bed. Nadi slept on my bed. And then in the morning, I got up and, you know, Nadi was still like, I feel like Nadi's like maybe a little bit scared of Bodhi. I'm not sure. Or like just nervous, like just avoiding her. And then Bodhi jumped onto my bed, which she's never done before. I've never seen her jump onto my bed. And she jumped onto my bed when Nadi was still there. And then Nadi growled a little bit. Bodhi growled a little bit. But that was the extent of it. And then we just kind of all went downstairs. So anyways, they're still getting used to each other. <laughs> So yeah, um, I hope they love each other soon. I was really sad for Nadi. I was like, oh, I don't want her to feel sad, you know? Especially because she doesn't live with me, right? And Booty lives with me, so I don't know. Mm. 
A lot of people gave me some really great words of encouragement. Mm. Saying that, you know, they'll get used to each other and they'll love each other soon. Mm. Oh, guys, this is so good. Anyway, if you guys have any words of encouragement, leave them down below. I've never had two dogs at the same time. My first dog was my sweet little Minnie, and then a couple years after Minnie passed away, it was Natty. So this is the first time where there's more than one dog in the family. And you know what? I feel like getting a slightly older dog, obviously adopting in any case, adopting, but getting a slightly older dog is so underrated. Okay, Woody, you know, she's been through a lot and there's construction going on outside. Woody, she's been through a lot and she definitely needs some training for sure. Like she needs to learn some commands and stuff. She's completely potty trained. She never goes in the house, which, you know, for a puppy, you have to train them immediately, you know, as soon as you get the puppy. Otherwise, they're gonna wreak havoc in your house, okay? You okay, buddy? Guys, she sleeps a lot. Buddy is already potty trained. She's quite calm. I think she's still getting used to everything here. And I try to take her for walks often and stuff, but I also don't want to overwork her because the first few days I feel like I over exercised her because I was trying to get her to eat, right? Because she wasn't eating and I was concerned. And anyway, she sleeps a lot when we're at home, which I know dogs sleep a lot, but she sleeps like a lot. <laughs> so I was like, is this a problem? But maybe it's normal. I don't know. I'm such a worrier. Like, I don't know how people have children and babies because I feel like even with dogs, I'm so worried anytime. I'm like, oh my God, are they sick? And I, I like freak out. So if I'm like that with a dog, what am I gonna be like with a child? I feel like it's like worse with dogs though because for their entire lives, they can't speak, right? So they can't speak your language, so they can't tell you, I feel sick, you know, I feel like I need to go to the doctor. <laughs> Whereas children, yes, they can't talk for the first few years, but then after, after the first few years, they can speak and they can be like, mommy, I'm sick. <laughs> so I feel like it's worse with dogs because you have to like kind of play a guessing game. Okay, and also vets are just so expensive. So you don't want to like take them to the bed every time you're like, like, are you feeling a little sick, you know? But at the same time, it's like, what if it is something serious, you know? I should have become a vet. <laughs> I should marry a vet. Mm -hmm. Any vets out there, you know? And also with dogs, they tend to hide when they're sick, so they try not to like show that they're sick. So it's even harder to tell. So the moral of the story is I need to marry a vet <laughs> so that I can always be certain that there is help around. 
All right, last little bite, or last big bite. Let's get all that parsley. Okay. Cheers, guys. that was so good oh my god I mean it was delicious okay once again the recipe for the gochujang pasta will be linked down below so make sure you check it out it is so delicious it's actually very very easy to make you can make it in 10 minutes okay as all my recipes are and if you guys want to hear more of Bodhi's story and why I decided to adopt her you can check out her video down below that I filmed already so that's available for you and yeah that's pretty much it thank you so much for watching you guys and uh, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!